so, um, first, a small introduction. I work for Greenhill Software, a well-known company in the software industry, embedded systems. I'm a field application engineer. I spent 20 years in this industry, over actually. But we're not here to talk about me. We're here to, for your sake. You're here to listen and learn something. Today I'm going to try to teach you how you can understand embedded systems behavior a bit better. So we heard this morning about testing, verification, validation. Is that enough to understand the system behavior on your device? Well, you go through a few of these steps, like system test. Do you really know how many modules you have in your system? And which order they're called in, right? Do system testing. Probably not. Go out that further down to do module testing. And do you know the internal behaviors of your module or in units, how, what are the performance metrics of a unit test? Right. The, the conclusion, no, we, we cannot fully understand our system behavior by just pure testing. We have to do something else. Now, Greenhouse is a software company, so we're talking about to, to software engineers. Um, so if you don't hook up a debugger, what is the number one action you do as a software engineer to learn about your system? Well, it's the printf function. Very simple. We write some data out on the serial port or whatever. Um, and this is actually, well, it's good for the first program you write, the hello world. It may not be very good for a complex system on a multi-core device because you would end up with a lot of data. So in the automotive industry that we're representing, we define the diagnostic log and trace protocol. It implements a simplified protocolized version of printf, right, with exported data of the system. The problem with these techniques is that they, they consume a lot of CPU power just to do logging or information, cap data capture. So the transition is really, you go into code instrumentation. Well, printf is code instrumentation, but you can do it on a software buffer. Well, you, you capture data into a specific buffer on certain events. You just need to place the events where, where more appropriate. You can do this even with hardware assistance features that are existing in, in some of the uh, cores that you're using on R850 or on ARM or uh, whatever. So they're hardware assistant features that you can use in order to capture the data out of your system. An important thing to remember then is that you should timestamp this data. The event I'm interested in at a certain point in time, that is the key point to capture. You can also do the standard debugging sessions. You can go through your code. You can inspect all the registers, all the variables. This is very low lead level of code and understanding your system. Um, you can automate this. You can have a debugger solution that sort of combines code instrumentation with breakpoints and debugger actions. That's also one way of, of capturing all the data. You can go a step further. You can capture the trace. So basically all of the instructions that ran through your program on your device, you can see them. They are timestamped because that's the way trace systems typically work. Or you see them as an instruction count. That's a very advanced technique and you can do uh, advanced features like trace analysis on this type of data. You can go back for and forth is in, in a trace session. And you would probably end up with a view like, like this. For some people, this is the holy grail of understanding your system behavior. Uh, it's a list of all of the instructions that ran in your system and uh, some collected information on, on the functions that were executed along with some timing. Well, it's, it, this is a good source of information, right? But there's more. Because we're also doing complex systems. So imagine the automotive world. We have the digital cockpit 
or a software defined vehicle for that matter. The Didier cockpit is a, a very complex system and has some type of foundation, a real time operating system foundation that hosts safety critical applications like an instrument cluster. It adds on a virtual machine that hosts a guest operating system like Linux or Android. And inside such a system, you're using navigation applications, audio applications. This is not a made up example. These systems exist in cars that are driving around the system in the cars in the streets today. So how do we capture the data out of this system? How do we debug it? That is the key question, right? So we need some type of tool features. We need some awareness and data capture methods of the operating system, of the hypervisor, inside the guest operating systems, where we can capture the, the critical moments, for what happens, that's scheduling, and it's communication. We have to make sure it's aware to run on a multi-core device, because there are multiple threads of execution in modern devices today. We should be able to do event recording, right? For instance, for my, my own special application, I should be able to tag the data. And in the meantime, we have to consider all of these sort of performance metrics. Low overhead, it should be time stamped. We should have the data in a retrievable buffer. So all these elements, they play together and sort of allow us to capture the data. Now, when we have captured the data, we can analyze texture logs, printfs. It's not very intuitive, right? In a complex system that runs all of these applications, it's going to be, take a lot of time to browse all of the logs. Unfortunately, this is still the place to find a lot of information for understanding your system. Um, in our world, we, we cannot longer do this. We have to do something else. We have to add something of visualization. We have to make an insight into our system. How is it performing? How is it visual? We can then paint a picture of the system. We can understand it better, especially if it's condensed into an understandable representation of, of what was going on. It should focus on profiling, scheduling, on communication and timing. Doing timing analysis in automotive applications is really important to make sure that our deadlines are met. And if you have this type of, uh, sort of analysis, data capture, visualization, you can do a, a more uh, sort of, um, what do you call it, efficient behavioral analysis, right? We can find the bugs that we seen. We can identify unknown behavior because we have a new visual insights to this system. Sorry, jumping a bit ahead. Uh, sorry, I missed a slide there, maybe. Uh, so, what this means is that we capture the data on a system and then we can import into visualization tools like the history tool from Greenness software. So what it represents here when we visualize profiling, it's an eight core system that runs the, the digital cockpit I just showed you. Virtualized guest, and you can see the performance utilization on all of the cores. It's a very spiky solution, depends on, on the zoom level of course because you can zoom in, you can see that it executes IP communication, it executes virtualization solutions or diagnostic login trace as well in this context. And you immediately get the visual feedback that this system has more performance to gain by making sure we use the course more efficiently. And in order to do so, you go into deeper, you zoom in, you go deeper into core scheduling and you see that I have two applications that are running in this zoomed in level 
and I see that they're not executing for a certain amount of time, and, and uh, see that the, the yellow line represents not executing, and the green line, the thick line, represents executing. And we can see that error, it's running on core one and core three. So a deeper insight to the system behavior. Now, why weren't we running in this point in time? Well, then we can do an even deeper analysis that we can actually go into the system events that were recorded. And we can visualize, in this case, it's a communication that is going on. It's a receive from the internet server. Well, that's socket communication that is happening. So the internet server is sending some data to my application. It's receiving some data that I need to act upon. So I was waiting on something, the data is received, and then I start to execute. Immediate feedback by just visual representation of the captured data. Now, you can go even deeper to understand what, what function was actually doing this call by zooming in and getting an insight of the call stack at that point in time. And all of this is based on the capture method that Green News uses to capture the data, collect it, and, and get it out of the system. An immediate understanding of the inner workings of, of the system. Now, this is another favorite of mine because you can also use this type of tool to do algorithmic comparisons. For instance, if you have algorithms that you want to identify object recognition solutions or um, whatever autonomous solution you're, you're using, you can visualize an algorithmic implementation like this and compare it to, to different designs. So in this case, it's just a sorting algorithm. There's four versions of the sorting algorithm. There's the bubble sort, it's the selection sort, it's the insertion sort and the quick sort algorithm. And you can clearly see that the bubble sort and, and the insertion sort algorithms are very slow. They have a very deep call stack. And the timeline is on the x-axis. You see, they're slow. The selection sort, so it looks fast enough. But what about the quick sort? That, that's extremely fast compared to the others, right? That's probably why it's called quicksort as well. But the, the thing is, this, this visual representation gives you the immediate feedback of which algorithms to, to check on. So I would definitely investigate the data here for the, quick, the, for the quicksort, because the quicksort algorithm here is, is, is well, that's, that's a strange one, right? It turns out that the fallback of the worst case execution time for a quick sort is the selection sort algorithm because you can see they are the similar ones. Purely by, by graphical representation. So to conclude this, in order to fully understand this, the embedded systems, make sure that we know how to, to sample our data. We have to make sure that the efficiency and analyzability is considered even at the sampling point. We need to understand the cost, because if we do printf or DLT, that, that is going to cost us overhead and timing. And we need to use some type of visualization tools to, to really analyze this data, to, to get the, the, the quick and deep insights of the systems immediately. Thank you.